Um, a good place to start is really to look at our data. So for example, in our previous section, we worked with the power network and we worked with the calendar JSON. And both of those could be um, optimized. First of all, when we worked with the calendar, um, we filtered and we only showed part of the results. So the entire JSON size sh um, had results from 2018 to 2021, but we haven't used all that data. So if we don't need all that data, it's a good idea not to pull all that data in. So if you go and you set, for example, I created a selector and I called it get chart data and I'm pulling that calendar JSON file and then in app I set a method to take that data, let's call it data, and I put a use effect so we can put a line breakpoint but what it's going to do is just going to go and pull that data from um, from our public data library um, and then in uh, um, we can use tools um, and the easiest tool to use is really what um, the browser gives us out of the box so take a look our code we can right click and inspect it and in the Chrome Dev Tools we can take a look at the network traffic and in the network traffic when we load our page it's going to show us everything that is being loaded and if we look at the counter JSON file um, there is a tab that's called timing and it will show us how long it took so it took close to 16 milliseconds um, this file is small in size but imagine it's half a megabyte imagine it's even bigger so we don't want to bring the entire uh, kitchen sink we want to bring only uh, the data that we need and that way we're really gonna save the time of processing that data and loading that data to the user machine especially when you're using single page application where the processing happen on the client side and not on the server side so we want to load as little as possible the same time if we look at the other data we use power network we had I set up the fill color with the color so we can send it over the wire and the radius size of the um, you know of our um, network node now we could have optimized it first of all for the radius size we could have just called it R right and that would have reduced um, the size of the file if you do it on all the um, you know everywhere that you see radius size and the other thing we could have done is completely get rid of the fill color and we could have done it in a different way we could have created some kind of um, um, constant in our application to kind of handle the different um, use cases and create us a different fill now if we're talking about JSON versus CSV for example that scatter CSV we used in one of our first sections um, you could see that it doesn't have all the overhead of JSON file. It just we have two fields and we have a delimiter of comma or whatever we want to use to um, you know to separate between those two fields. So it doesn't have all that overhead that you see inside of JSON. So if you if it's up to you and you can choose between CSV to JSON, you should pick CSV any day of the week. Another thing I want to point out, there's a library called GraphQL, if you haven't used that, and it's really popular in the world of uh, React, and it gives the client the power to ask exactly what they want and nothing more, and that can decrease um, the size of the data we're pulling from the back end. The thing is, um, we need to make sure and try to make as few requests as possible. So, meaning when the more requests you, you do, it takes time just to get that request going and the overhead around the request. So it's better to kind of put all the data in one um, data source instead of making multiple requests. And it's also, you rather use HTTP3 over HTTP2 and try to avoid to use HTTP altogether. I'm not going to get too much into it, but HTTP3 is the best and it's more common and faster. And um, more this is because that most sites are linking the same resources for example analytic or whatever files so HTTP 3 
will cache that and will not um, all the time load that. Um, the last thing I want to point out is do asynchronous request over blocking request. So it's a uh, try to really avoid blocking requests as much as possible. And also, um, the other thing I want to point out is, is that there's so many ways of, um, you know, in terms of the resource that you download. So you really need to go through, um, you know, look in your network um, and see um, what you're loading and see how much everything takes. There's tools that are more sophisticated, um, you know, to help you analyze that. For example, Charles is um, an HTTP proxy that will allow you in a more, much more sophisticated, it has more features. It's a paid version. Um, so, um, you know, if you don't have a license, you're going to have to get one. But um, it really offers a lot of features that can help you debug and throttle the network and do all kind of crazy stuff to kind of um, check your resources.